In this video, we're going to go over a few problems associated with absolute pressure and gauge pressure. So let's start with this one. The pressure inside a tank is 4.2 atm at sea level. What is the gauge pressure inside the tank? So what you need to know is that the gauge pressure is the difference between the total pressure and the atmospheric pressure. Let's call the atmospheric pressure PA. The total pressure is the same as the absolute pressure. So the gauge pressure is basically the pressure that's measured relative to the atmospheric pressure. Now we have the pressure inside the tank, or the total pressure, and that's 4.2 atm. At sea level, the atmospheric pressure is 1 atm. So the gauge pressure is 3.2 atm. That's the pressure above the atmospheric pressure. And so that's the answer for this problem. Number two, if the pressure inside a storage tank is 0.9 atm at sea level, then what is the gauge pressure inside the tank? So this question is very similar to the last problem. And so we could use the same formula. The gauge pressure is the difference between the absolute pressure, or the total pressure, and the atmospheric pressure. So the total pressure inside the tank is 0.9 atm. And we know that the atmospheric pressure at sea level is always going to be 1 atm. And keep in mind, 1 atm is 101.3 kilopascals. So the gauge pressure is going to be 0.9 minus 1 which is negative 0.1 atm. So a negative gauge pressure means that the absolute pressure inside the tank is less than the atmospheric pressure. A positive gauge pressure means that the pressure in the tank is above the atmospheric pressure. Number three, a tire gauge measures the pressure of a tire to be 325 kilopascals. What is the absolute pressure inside the tire at sea level? So the absolute pressure, which is basically the total pressure, is the sum of the atmospheric pressure plus the gauge pressure. So we know that the atmospheric pressure at sea level in kilopascals is 101.3 kPa. And in this problem, the gauge pressure of the tire is 325 kilopascals. So the total pressure is going to be the sum of these values. So it's 101.3 plus 325. And so it's 426.3 kilopascals. So that's the total pressure or the atmos I mean the absolute pressure inside this particular tire. Number four, a diver is currently located at a depth of 50 meters in the ocean. What is the gauge pressure at this point? And what is the absolute pressure? So let's say this is the water or the ocean. And the diver is somewhere right here. So it's 50 meters below the surface of the water. How can we find the pressure at that level? Now what you need to understand is that the gauge pressure is the pressure due to the fluid, due to the water alone. The absolute pressure is going to be the total pressure due to the weight of the water above him plus the weight of the atmosphere. So the weight of the water above the diver will give you the gauge pressure. And the weight of the water plus the weight of the air above him will give you the absolute pressure. So first we've got to find the gauge pressure. Now pressure is defined as force divided by area. So we want to find the gauge pressure due to the water. So what we need is the force of all of the water molecules above the diver 
divided by the area of the diver. Now, the force that all of these molecules exert is basically the weight of all of that water above the diver. And the weight force is simply mg. Now, when dealing with fluids, you don't want to use the mass of the fluid. Rather, you want to use density and volume. Density is mass divided by volume. So mass is density times volume. So let's replace m in this equation with pv. So this lowercase p is basically rho. That's the density of the fluid times the volume of the fluid times gravitational acceleration divided by the area. Now the volume of an object can be described as the area times the height. So for example, let's say if you have a cylinder. The volume of this cylinder is the area of the base, which is the circle, times the height. And the area of that circle is pi r squared. So therefore, this is the volume of a cylinder, pi r squared times h. But in this example, we're going to replace the volume with the area times the height. So we could cancel a on the top and on the bottom. So this is the formula you need to calculate the gauge pressure due to a fluid. It's the density of the fluid times the gravitational acceleration times the height. So now I can get rid of this other stuff. So the gauge pressure is going to be the density of seawater since the diver is in the ocean. So that's 1025 times g, which is 9.8, times a height of 50 meters. So 1025 times 9.8 times 50, that's going to give us a gauge pressure of 502,250 pascals. So let's convert that to kilopascals. So let's divide it by 1,000. So we could say we're going to round it. It's about 502 kilopascals. So that's the gauge pressure due to the water above the diver. Now what is the absolute pressure? So the absolute pressure is based on the weight of the seawater above the diver, which represents the gauge pressure, plus the pressure of the atmosphere. So the gauge pressure is 502 kilopascals. The atmospheric pressure is 101.3 pascals. So if you want to get a more exact answer, it's 502.25 plus 101.3. So that's going to be 603.55 kilopascals. So that's the absolute pressure at this point. Number five. In the figure shown below, the height of the water and oil are 15 meters and 8 meters respectively. The container is open to the atmosphere. What is the gauge pressure and absolute pressure at the oil water interface? So this is the oil water interface. So the gauge pressure is going to be due to the weight of the oil alone. So let's find the gauge pressure first. So the gauge pressure is going to be PGH, the density of the oil, which is 750, times the gravitational acceleration, which is 9.8, and the height in meters is 8 meters. 750 times 9.8 times 8. That's going to give us a gauge pressure of 58,800 pascals. But now let's convert it to kilopascals. Let's divide it by 1,000. So this is going to be 58.8 kilopascals. So that's the gauge pressure at the oil water interface. Now the total pressure is going to be the gauge pressure plus 
the atmospheric pressure. So it's based on the weight of the oil above the interface and the weight of the air molecules above the oil. So it's going to be 58.8 plus 101.3. So the total pressure is going to be 160.1 kilopascals. So that's the absolute pressure at the oil water interface. Now let's move on to part B. So what is the gauge pressure and the absolute pressure at the bottom of the container? So let's start with the gauge pressure. The gauge pressure, which is the pressure relative to the atmospheric pressure, it's going to be due to the weight of the oil and the water. So we're going to have the pressure due to the oil plus the pressure due to the water. So we got to add these two. So it's going to be PGH for the oil plus rho GH for the water. So the density of the oil, we know it's 750, G is 9.8, and the height is 8. That's for the oil. Now for the water, the density is 1,000. You just need to know that. G is 9.8 again, and the height of the water is 15. So we know that 750 times 9.8 times 8, that's 58,800. And 1,000 times 9.8 times 15, that's 147,000 pascals. So if we add these two numbers, this will give us a gauge pressure of 205,800 pascals. So if we divide that by 1,000, that's going to be 205.8 kilopascals. So that's the gauge pressure at the bottom of the container. Now the absolute pressure is simply the sum of the gauge pressure and the atmospheric pressure. So we have the gauge pressure as 205.8 and the atmospheric pressure is 101.3. And so the absolute pressure is going to be 307.1 kilopascals. And so that's the answer. That's the total pressure at the bottom of the container. So that's due to the weight of the water, the oil, and the air above it.